Pumped a lot of money into them. True spokes, custom paint jobs, flake tops, murals, convertibles, <laughs> diamond tuck interior, um, hydraulics. hydraulics. Those were um, the amenities to the cars. And then there was a movie that called Boulevard Nights that came out, and it was about low riding in East LA, and man, it blew up. As soon as that movie hit up here, man, it just like, all of a sudden, like thousands and thousands and thousands of people started coming out. And when that movie came out, it flipped the script. Everybody wanted to be a cholo, everybody wanted to be a low rider. Just like any other kind of movie that comes out that's very influential, you know, a lot of kids emulated that. Uh, the lowrider dudes kept doing what they were doing. Yeah, if you look at that, if you see the movie now, you'll say, it's a corny movie, what was it about that movie? It just made you want to uh, be part of the street culture. I think that probably Hollywood, you know, speaking about institutional racism, you know, the, the media in terms of Hollywood created a couple of movies that really um, glorified and romanticized um, the violent part of, you know, maybe Latinos or the Chicano or the lowrider culture, and they made money off of it, but they also instigated kind of a, uh, or perpetuated kind of a violence that, that came into our neighborhoods. You know, I think that they kind of brought in uh, the exposure more issues of like Norteños and Sureños and gang violence and, and the, because that got so romanticized in Hollywood movies that were played and you know we watched them and you know and I, I don't think that that was a good thing f for us. The mayor of San Francisco at the time even tried to shut down all the stores that were selling all the all the um, homeboy paraphernalia such as Dickies and bandanas and whatever else you know vinyl shoes whatever else that, that um, uh, was coming along with the style. The stereotypes were that they were definitely, you know, gang affiliated, so that any car club was actually a gang, which was untrue, that they were violent, that they were drug dealers, because otherwise how could, you know, these poor brown kids afford this and that, they must be selling drugs or doing something illegally. That association with, you know, lowriders and gangs, that they were synonymous. In the 80s, you did not have Sureños and Norteños. What you had was the mission. Folsom Park, Hampshire. Hampshire, Little Park, 24th Street, Daily Mission, City. East Side Daily City, Fogtown. Excelsior, Fogtown, and all these people were not about colors, they were about neighborhoods. And I think that it's really sad um, how it's really gotten divvied up, uh, where at one time, you know, particularly San Francisco, how we were really united as Latinos. I decided to go to all the car clubs and ask them that we form what I, the San Francisco Lowrider Council to to work towards, you know, protecting the rights of lowriders because at that time the police was um, not acting right. The police would then start blocking off streets where we couldn't go all the way up to 16th. They'd make a detour and then they would harass the youngsters who were hanging out on the side of the, on the sidewalk. They started giving us tickets for, you know, driving too, too low. Uh, they started giving us tickets for modifying our, our vehicles. Like back then it wasn't, it wasn't uncommon for a cop to slap you or to hit you. Uh, I remember they broke one of my light bulbs, and then the cop goes, oh, you got a broken light bulb, I'm going to write you a ticket. I'm like, dude, you just, you just did that. And he said, no, I didn't, you know? And I said, all right. We didn't have cell phones. We, had, we relied on the phone booth. You know, we all claimed our own little phone booth in certain neighborhoods, right? For example, we had the one on 24th and uh, right, right by the, where the McDonald's is, right? The phone would ring, hey, this, you know, who's out there, what's going on? There's a quinceañera, there's a party, whatever, you know, Mitchell's throwing a dance. What the cops would come do is they knew that we, we were constantly on the phone and they would mace the telephones. So when we would use the phone, we'd have that mace on us and they would tear our eyes and, and mess us up. I mean, it really wasn't um, 
any disturbance at all from the lowriders. It was more like a, a viewing, kind of a, you know, kicking it and, and watching it, you know, happen. But the police didn't like it. Neighbors didn't understand it. Police brutality became a real social issue in the mission in the 80s. There were people that were beat up terribly. The Mission District used to be the training ground for all police. Any police that was to become a cop in the city was trained in the Mission. So we, as youngsters at that time, were their guinea pigs. It was a, a form of discrimination and, and racism, you know, and, and, and we felt that, you know, um, it was against our constitutional rights, so we got organized. We started fighting back, and we started calling the media, and so we started getting on television and newspapers and, and protesting the right to be able to assemble. And we started bringing cameras. Ray Balbron from Mission Media Arts at that time, he'd come film. A lot of photographers would come film. And they would follow the police around so that if they would start beating up on somebody, they would film it and then get it on camera. And the cops hated that, man. And the more media attention we got, the worse they got. And uh, we landed up suing them in federal court. And we filed a lawsuit. Uh, against the San Francisco Police Department, the mayor, and we took the police to, uh, we put them on trial. Um, and then, of course, they didn't like that, and that made the situation even worse. But we didn't care at that point. You know, we, we figured, you know what, we were going to stand up, and we weren't going to, you know, get on our knees and beg. You know, we are going to fight for the rights, you know, that, that we're entitled to. After cruising and kind of after shutting down, the shutting down of Mission Street, it's like, well, where you go? There was really no place to go. You know, Mission was what was the place to, to hang out and, and cruise. So we found a, a vacant lot over there off of Petrero and, and 26 across the street from Mouth Park. And the, the lot was just a vacant lot. It was broken glass and, you know, it was, just, it was just an empty lot. But we'd go and hang out there. We'd just, you know, have a place to park and socialize because it wasn't really a gathering place for people to socialize you know, in the mission. And so we would make do with whatever we could find, and we found a vacant lot. And it was literally a lot, not a paved lot, but a raggedy lot. He used Open to fuck up our cars all the time. 